The University of Toronto is a public research university in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, located on the grounds that surround Queen's Park. It was founded by Royal Charter in 1827 as King's College, the first institution of higher learning in Upper Canada. So in this video, we are going to discuss University of Toronto. The video is going to be amazing. Make sure to stick till the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. The University of Toronto, WU Toronto or U of T, is a public research university in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, located on the grounds that surround Queen's Park. It was founded by Royal Charter in 1827 as King's College, the first institution of higher learning in Upper Canada. Originally controlled by the Church of England, the university assumed its present name in 1850 upon becoming a secular institution. Early History The founding of a colonial college had long been the desire of John Graves Simcoe, the first lieutenant governor of Upper Canada and founder of York, the colonial capital. As an Oxford-educated military commander who had fought in the American Revolutionary War, Simcoe believed a college was needed to counter the spread of republicanism from the United States. The Upper Canada Executive Committee recommended in 1798 that a college be established in York. On March 15, 1827, a royal charter was formally issued by King George IV, proclaiming from this time one college with the style and privileges of a university for the education of youth in the principles of the Christian religion and for their instruction in the various branches of science and literature to continue forever, to be called King's College. The granting of the charter was largely the result of intense lobbying by John Strachan, the influential Anglican Bishop of Toronto who took office as the college's first president. Academics The Faculty of Arts and Science is the university's main undergraduate faculty, and administers most of the courses in the college system. While the colleges are not entirely responsible for teaching duties, most of them have specialized academic programs and lecture series. Among other subjects, Trinity College is associated with programs in international relations, as are University College, with Canadian Studies, Victoria College, with Renaissance Studies, Innes College with Film Studies and Urban Studies, New College with Gender Studies, Woodsworth College with Industrial Relations, and Street Michaels College with Medievalism. The University of Toronto is the birthplace of an influential school of thought on communication theory and literary criticism known as the Toronto School. Described as the theory of the primacy of communication in the structuring of human cultures and the structuring of the human mind, this school is rooted in the works of Eric A. Havelock and Harold Innes, and the subsequent contributions of Edmund Snow Carpenter, Northrop Fry, and Marshall McLuhan. The Dalla School of Public Health is a faculty of the University of Toronto that began as one of the schools of hygiene begun by the Rockefeller Foundation in 1927. The school went through a dramatic renaissance after the 2003 SARS crisis, and it is now Canada's largest public health school, with more than 750 faculty, 800 students, and research and training partnerships with institutions throughout Toronto and the world. Research the university manages by far the largest annual research budget of any university in Canada with sponsored direct cost expenditures of $878 million in 2010. In 2018, the University of Toronto was named the top research university in Canada by Research InfoSource with a sponsored research income, external sources of funding of $1,147.584 million in 2017. In the same year, the university's faculty averaged a sponsored research income of $428,200, while graduate students averaged a sponsored research income of $63,700. The federal government was the largest source of funding, with grants from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, and the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, amounting to about one-third of the research budget. About 8% of research funding came from corporations, mostly in the healthcare industry. Culture and Student Life In the heart of social, cultural, and recreational life at the University of Toronto lies Hart House, the sprawling neo-Gothic student activity center that was conceived by alumnus benefactor Vincent Massey and named for his grandfather Hart. Opened in 1919, the complex established a communitarian spirit in the university and its students 
who at the time kept largely within their own colleges under the decentralized collegiate system. At Hardhouse, a student can read in the library, dine casually, or, formally, have a haircut, visit the art gallery, watch a play in the theater, listen to a concert, observe or join in debates, play billiards, or go for a swim and find a place to study, all under the same roof and within the span of a day. The confluence of assorted functions is the result of a deliberate effort to create a holistic educational experience, a goal summarized in the Founders' Prayer. The Hardhouse model was influential in the planning of student centers at other universities, notably Cornell University's Willard Strait Hall. Theater and Music Hardhouse Theater is the university's student amateur theater, generally producing four major plays every season. As old as Hardhouse itself, the theater is considered a pioneer in Canadian theater for introducing the little theater movement from Europe. It has cultivated numerous performing arts talents, including Donald Sutherland, Lorne Michaels, Wayne and & Schuster, and William Hutt. Three members of the group of seven painters, Lismer and MacDonald, have been set designers at the theater, and composer Healy Willen was director of music for 14 productions. Student Media The Varsity is one of Canada's oldest student-run newspapers and publication since 1880. The paper was originally a daily broadsheet, but has since adopted a compact format and is now weekly during the fall and winter semesters. It publishes online in the summer. Hardhouse Review, a literary magazine, published prose, poetry, and visual art from emerging Canadian writers and artists. The newspaper is an independent student-run community newspaper, published weekly since 1978. Sci FM is the university's campus radio station, while the University of Toronto Television broadcasts student-produced content. Students at each college and academic faculty also produce their own set of journals and news publications. University College's The Gargoyle was an early training ground for such notables as journalist Naomi Klein and musician or comedian Paul Schaffer. Residences Each college at the University of Toronto operates its own set of residence halls and dining halls clustered in a different area of the campus. In its new St. Michael's, Trinity, University, Victoria, and Woodsworth Colleges reserve most of their dormitories for their undergraduate students within the Faculty of Arts and Science while setting a portion available to students from the professional and postgraduate faculties. Massey College is exclusively for graduate students, while Knox and Wycliffe Colleges mainly house graduate theology students. Annesley Hall of Victoria College, a national historic site, was the first university residence for women in Canada. As campus residences accommodate just 6,400 students in all, the university guarantees housing only for undergraduates in their first year of study, while most upper-year and graduate students reside off-campus. Traditionally, the adjacent neighborhoods of the Annex and Harvard Village are popular settling grounds for University of Toronto students, forming a distinct student quarter enclave, though Chinatown and Kensington Market are increasingly populated by students. Let us know your opinion in the comments section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more interesting videos. Stay safe and we will be back soon with another video.